finished one minute so will it be open cam or closed cam uh yeah it's up to mohammed yes if you want to open the camera you can open okay yeah so i'll start i'll i'll put the time i'll put the timer okay okay you can okay okay so yes, mohammed mohammed you can start now okay um hello i am dr niyas one of the pediatric register here uh, hello doctor uh, emma uh, um how are you doing uh yeah i am fine yeah i am actually i am supposed to do some general examination of you uh, is it okay with you oh sure yeah okay so let's i wash my hands and uh, i am checking whether there is any um any support like oxygen oxygen because i can see in the picture there is a nasal cannula so is there an oxygen supply oxygen support for the patient yeah there is an oxygen cylinder nearby okay any uh, saline iv cannulas any other aids no 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 and how is the patient is is in distress or in uh, comfortable patient is comfortable okay uh, first of all i would like to plot the height and weight uh, in the grow chart appropriate for the female chart grow chart and uh, yeah, i'm uh, tall tall for her tall. age okay she is and, a thin built girl and tall for her age okay and uh, i would like to see the uh, dysmorphic features in the picture i can see some uh, dark pigmentation around the eyes and uh, down slanting palpebral fissure and there is a nasal cannula in situ and in the hands uh, uh, that's on the face anything in the opening mouth is there a high arch palate yeah there is a high arch palate okay and uh, i'm not sure about the uh, low cetus but in the picture looks like a low cetus is it uh, same in the real picture yeah you uh, you can't appreciate so much okay fine and uh, i will go down to the hands peripheries and uh, in the peripheries i am seeing the arm span which is she is measuring in the picture and uh, also i check the fingers she is holding the uh, wrist with the hyper extension and the uh, fingers are looks like arachnodactyly that is a spider uh, appearance as well and also the when she hold the fingers crossing that's showing some uh, crossing the uh, whole palm whole palm aspects and also i will checking the uh, foot the the toes are very enlarged and the pitches of arachnodactyly is noted and uh, I, i would like to check the eyes there is there any features possible to check the eyes with the ophthalmoscope what are you expecting in the eyes i am looking for uh, um, dislocation of the lens there is a downwards or outward or upward yeah you can't see with the naked eye so much okay i like but she, is, she is wearing a uh, it's not shown in the picture but she is wearing thick glasses without glass i, I can see there is a lens is uh, downwards and laterally or medially uh, the luxation is noted okay and uh, with this general examination i would like to examine the heart whether i am looking for some abnormalities in the heart can i go ahead sure yeah so uh, inspection is there any visible pulsation uh yeah there is a little bit of hyperdynamic apex okay and uh, what about this uh, the apex position is it in the left uh, fifth intercostal space or displaced of the mid axillary line or sorry mid mid clavicular line actually doctor your uh, task is general examination not uh, cardiovascular system examination so you want to modify your examination a bit okay just i will i have to auscultate only just to 
listen to the murmur only is it okay okay you want to listen to the murmur yeah uh, is there any murmur i have uh, murmur like ejection uh, sorry early uh, diastolic murmur is there any but in the lower sternal edge yeah yeah there is a early diastolic murmur okay okay so with this uh, clinical features uh, i would like to summarize the uh, Uh, this is uh, Emma, fourteen-year-old girl, who is having features uh, of uh, uh, Marfan syndrome. The most probably uh, the syndromic features like uh, uh, some hyperpigmentation, upper palpebral fissure, and also this uh, high arch palate, and uh, this hypermobility in the hands and arachnoidectomy and increased uh, arm span, which all and also with the from the eyes, I can see there is a Uh, downwards the dislocation and uh, of the actually should be upward dislocation and uh, uh, cardiovascular examination there is early dialos uh, diastolic murmur which is uh, contributing to the aortic uh, aortic regurgitation so which all will be contribute to do patient is having features of uh, marfan syndrome so for this patient uh, i would like to go for a uh, management wise i would like to go for a Um, cardiology appointment to get a cardiology in, a cardiology involvement for the. Uh, uh, I I'll stop you for a moment. Ah, uh, you told that you have found hypermobility. What hypermobility tests you have done to confirm that the that Emma is hypermobile? Yeah, the the picture is showing the the thumb is crossing the whole palm when she is clenching the fist, fist clenching, and also she can. All the wrist with the thumb and the little finger encircling completely. Okay, do you know of any manual tools which you do confirm hypermobility? Sorry, ma'am, I didn't get this. Ah, uh, do you know any particular manuals you do to detect mm. hypermobility? Have you ever heard of Bayton score? No, ma'am. Okay, well, that's fine. That's fine. So, uh, how will you, Doctor Loni? What is the time? Examination part already six minutes over. So now discussion part is going on. Yeah. Discussion part is going on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, yeah, now, you can start. Discussion three minutes. Three minutes. Three yeah, minutes. Three, okay. Three. So, uh, so right, three minutes. So, you think this is a case of Marfan syndrome? Yeah, I think so. Ah, uh, you ah, uh, uh, do you want to do anything to complete your examination? Okay, okay. So, how will you ah uh, investigate this case? Ah, uh, investigation. First of all, I would get the ophthalmologic assessment. The eye, uh, I, I, I referral for the confirmation of the eye lens subluxation. And also involve the cardiologist to confirm the uh, suspicion of uh, aortic regurgitation. Or from then onwards, they will do the follow up uh, for the need for the surgical or intervention, whatever that needed. They will follow up. And also for the nutritional aspect, I will consider because she is thin and uh, very emaci looks emaciated. So nutritional support, I will get for the nutrition and uh, even the nutrition nurse also get their help for the nutrition aspect. And also, uh, I forgot to mention that about the uh, spine that they are likely to get uh, scoliosis, which is associated with uh, Marfan syndrome. So that scoliosis also, I will involve orthopedic surgeon uh, if the life day-to-day -day life is affected or her activities of deep living is affected. It should be referred to orthopedic surgeon, get their opinion, and uh, and also I will get. I would like to get her. Uh, social background, whether she is able to do the daily activities in, in relation to this disease itself. Uh, so that also I will get the social aspect of uh, help from the uh, social services, which uh, which will be needed in future. Okay. Do you want to tell Emma about some red flag sign which she should report when she feels that symptoms? Some red flag signs you think you should tell Emma? Yeah, um, 
No, ma'am, I don't. Can you think of any complication of Marfan syndrome? Yeah, in the relation to the cardiac uh, disorder, uh, cardiac condition, they are able to get uh, aortic, uh, aortic, uh, what do you call it? Uh, dissection. That is one of the complications they can get, which uh, with associated with the chest pain, sharp pain, they will develop in that case, she should immediately go to the nearest hospital. And it will be, uh, the information I will give to the parent as well. So this, uh, this is a very uh, medical emergency. So that's the uh, uh, things I will tell them. Any other cause of chest pain? Another cause? And um, Primary is Pneumothorax. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mohammed. And I'll thank you. Were thanks. Good. Thank you. You were good. Quite good. A uh, little bit about the approach. Uh, your beginning was very good because you washed your hands, greeted me, and uh, you, since she was tall, you just took the height well. And, but after that, it was like from the hand to the head, again to the hand. It, the, it was a little bit haphazard. So you should follow the format of other station when it's a general examination. It should be like that. This format is same for all. Okay, when it is others, whether it is a tall stature, whether it is a short stature, whether it is some skeletal abnormalities or whether it is a thyroid, you should be following the same structure which you should uh, the, you should just write what are the things so in a very systematic way so that you don't miss the points here it's a tall stature just getting into the picture you know this is a tall stature so measures measures you just ask for height it was well above her age since you are just thinking from the picture it was quite evident that it was marfan syndrome so in the height immediately what next should come upper segment lower segment here the lower segment will be more than the upper segment so just the systemic way that come the arms so these are the only three measures you take arm span is more than the height so these three points just got into the measures now come how will you proceed towards the examination when you proceed for the others just go from First, you sometimes it so happens uh, that you are thinking of a morphon there might uh, or some other it might not be a morphon just a simple tall stature, okay, and it might be a thyroid. Sometimes hyperthyroid th thyroid may present with hypothyroidism also. So in that case, if you proceed from the neck, you will get a thyroid. The examiner might be say examine the thyroid. So from the neck, then comes the leg. You are, you miss the spine. Spine you told later, yeah. So not to miss the thing just from the first see the leg the back gait then the head or the hands or the head or head or the hands or you can start from after taking the measures you can just ask the child to walk sometimes hypermobile gait they just have a genuine recurvatum type of picture no that the, the knees are knees how to say the knees are Mm, they are bent inwards, not genuine recurvatum type, hypermobile. Morphons have a hypermobile type of uh, this one, uh, knee. So if you first see the leg, what are the things you are expecting in the leg? In every case, skin, muscle, bone. Skin, you might see cafe owl spots. Okay, then muscle, not so much of the muscle, then bone, knee, then genuine recurvatum, there might be scars. So I was asking about the hypermobility test. You should know about the Baton score. Baton score is a total score of nine. We do some maneuvers, and if the score is more than four, that is five out of nine, means the child is hypermobile. You will get in mark bt page number i'm telling you you should go through this today you go through this baton score 343 page number all of you can note down 343 baton score here a score of more than four is su suggestive of hypermobility you just can't say that the child is hypermobile you have to give a score here what is the main score first is that well, when the child is standing and you ask him to touch the floor with the palm, like this, the palm, if the palm, we can't touch the palm, we can't 
we usually touch the hand like this. But yeah. if you can touch, when you just bend over and you touch, means the spine is hypermobile. So this is score one. Then for each of the legs, there are scores where you ask the legs to extend. If the normal extension is around 10 degree, if the extension is more than 10 degree, then the knees are hypermobile. Okay, so each knee will be one one. So total how much? Spine one, knee one, both the knees, three total. Huh? Then elbow. This is the elbow. We can extend like this only. But in case of hypermobile, elbow extension is they like bending type. Okay. So one point here, one point there. Next, how much? Total five. Next comes the oppose the thumb to the forearm. Here this thumb, you oppose to the forearm, forearm, to the forearm. It's not like this. It's to the forearm. This is a forearm. This is a forearm. Okay, you can, we don't, we can't. Can you oppose this? No, we can't. But hypermobile child, this arm will be here. This you can, so this is this. And next, extend the fifth metacarpophalangeal joint, hyperextension. Got it? So if you do this maneuvers, it means that the child is hypermobile. So there are two in the leg, one in the spine, Total, how Nine. much in the hand? Six. How, how much in the, this one, this one in one hand plus this, six in the hand. Okay. So when you approach the leg, what you will see, you see the skin, muscle, bone, hypermobile at the same time. And also you can see pest planus. Okay. Pest planus is present in Marfan syndrome. Then leg, you didn't miss anything. Then you can go to the back. Back, you see the skin, curvature, scars, any cafe outlet spots, and then again you ask to touch the this one, floor. Okay, so leg, back, you are not miss, missing anything. Then you come to the head. Okay, head, what you will see? Head, you will see, you might see the specs, a dolicocephalic head, you will see high up palate, you ask, dental crowding, you ask, glasses, there might be hearing aids also. Yes or no, hearing aids. So these are the things you have seen. Then comes the hands. Hence, what you have seen. You have seen in the picture, arachnodactyly, then the wrist sign and the thumb sign. You, if you can't remember the name of the sign, no, you just say wrist sign, thumb sign, okay. And all the hypermobile. So leg, gait, back, then head, then comes what? Hands, then next thing is chest. Chest, you don't need to do the whole cardiovascular examination. Okay, that is another separate thing. Just here you can ask for the murmur. That was very nice of you. And chest, you can see of chest deformity. What are the chest deformity you are expecting in Marfans? Any chest deformity? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Pectus, excavator, carry. It's a deformity. Yes, you can get some bony deformities. So, the, or you can get, can you get scar marks in the chest? Yeah, Can maybe for valvular replacement, yeah. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, so you have to be systematic. From the measures, come directly from mm -hmm. the leg, back, the spine, the hands, the head, and if there is additional chest or heart, just ask for that. You will yeah. not miss anything. Then, then 14-year-old girl, what is important? 14-year-old girl? Puberty. Capron, yeah. Missed it. Pubertal assessment is Puberty. something you cannot miss Puberty. in a 14-year-old girl. That is Puberty. very important. Okay. So you will some things you if you can't you cannot finish on time, you can just say, I would like to complete my examination by doing the formal visual assessment, formal hearing assessment, then pubertal assessment, and I would like to check the BP. Is BP important? Yes. Yes, BP is What's important. It? Check what, Doctor? Uh, visual, hearing, then up, uh, your uh, pubertal and BP. BP, okay? BP, you said BP, no? Blood pressure. Blood blood pressure. pressure. Yeah. Oh, okay, and, yeah. Blood pressure, yes. <laughs> and uh, do you uh, like to ask something? Do you want to ask something? Is there any other family members? Why? Because why? Autosomal why? Dominant. Because, autosomal dominant. Very good. because it is an autosomal dominant condition. So this is 
way how you just finish the examination. Examination. Do, the family yeah. history. The examination. Uh -huh. But is no, it allowed? No. After you examine, you say. I'd like. I would like after the examination you have finished. It will hardly take three minutes because you. These are the things. It will just take three and three and a half minutes. Then I would like to complete my examination. This, 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 and also would like to ask about the family history because I because uh, considering my diagnosis of Morphan syndrome, this is an autosomal condition. Okay, oh. you can say that. Oh. Or if you don't say also, it's okay. But you have to say complete my examination with formal visual hearing assessment, pubertal assessment. Okay, that is very important because they won't let you to assess the puberty in a girl of 14 years, definitely not. So, and investigations, investigations, when you say there are certain way you should say that there are some diagnostic investigations, there are some additional supportive investigations. You just can't say, I will look at the eye, ear, or like I say, uh, if this is a Morphan syndrome, how, uh, how will you proceed? Considering this it is a genetic defect with defect in chromosome 15 i would like to do a diagnostic genetic test okay i would like to do some radiological test genetic is the main diagnostic then comes some broad headings if you say from here and there then you might not remember but if you say some broad headings and you just put the investigations under that radiologically i what you want to do say i have told radiologically can you think of some three radiological investigations which you want to do in a case of marfan syndrome you just think with me it will easily come to your mind you have already said the answer just x-ray very good and uh, spine very good and uh, and another one just another one left you went there you are there exactly there echo echo, echo perfect echo. i would like to do i would like to do a chest x-ray to rule out pneumothorax scoliosis i would like to do an echo to rule out any underlying valvulation i would like to do an mri spine to look out to rule out any spinal abnormalities. Don't just say, I would like to do an X-ray, ego, MRI. You say what you are expecting. Okay, I want to do an X-ray to uh, see for pneumothorax, scoliosis, and ego to do the underlying heart. So if you don't, the examiner will have nothing to ask because you are back on target. You know what you are expecting. Yes. From because we won't do all investigation. We are doing particular investigation because we are expecting something for mm -hmm. that investigation. Yes or no? So yes. if you do, and some additional, additional, what do you want to do? Genetic is the diagnostic. Some radiological and some additional, which will not fall, follow fall in any other category. But still, since it's a Marfan syndrome, I would like to do some additional investigations. Then. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, exactly, you know. The ophthalmology. Good. So, slit lamp examination to rule out lens. Uh, this lens, this location, I'm not sure, pretty not sure whether you can just see with the naked eye. I think it requires a slit lamp examination to look for lens, this location, which is upward and outwards in homocysteine, right? This downwards and inwards. Yeah, yeah. That it is spirometry. Slit, slit lamp examination only, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Spirometry. Spirometry because what? Because of kyphoscoliosis, there might be some restriction of the lung involvement yes, and hearing yes. interest. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and my team, what are my team? Pedi pediatrician, cardiologist, uh, ophthalmologist, uh, psychol physiotherapist, occupational therapist, and you also have to say liars with the school and support to the family. These are something. Because we are not only here to diagnose the disease and give some medical treatment. We are here for an overall assessment and management of the child. So it should involve the school and the family as well. And another thing I would all of you like to know that when a child is hypermobile, there are some problems with the child. It might... It, they might have problems in walking because of knee pain. They might have a problem in gripping, gripping the pen and pencil because of hypermobility, because of pain. Okay. So for that, you have to give some hypermobility advice. Very well written in Mark Bitti. I will not go into the details. This will be the homework. Then what are the advice you give? They ask, what are the advice you want to give to the child or to the parents? Yeah. The mother is complaining that uh, Emma is having pain in walking, pain in writing. Uh, so, and feels uh, 
problem in uh, walking also, then you have to say all these things, such as strengthening of muscle exercises. Then for hypermobility, you have to wider pencils for a good grip. So these are written in details, okay? Just I'm giving you the broad headlines and cardiac advice because if there is an underlying heart disease, there are some cardiac advice uh, you should give to a child. Do you know any of the cardiac advice which usually we give to a child with a heart disease? Uh, sports, avoid the status exercise. Activity restriction. Yeah, yeah, very good. Ex exercise, which we do according to the advice of cardiologists, adequate nutrition, avoid tattooing and piercing. You know that? Avoid, you have to avoid tattooing and piercing. Good oral hygiene. That's a very important thing you have to maintain. Okay. And to report if there is fever. Report immediately if there is fever. Okay. If a child with underlying heart disease. And red flag signs, you already said, very good. Chest pain due to two conditions because there is a uh, high chance of spontaneous uh, pneumothorax and aortic root dissection. Okay. And uh, also genetic counseling will be another important factor. And can you give me two differentials, three differentials of a child with, who is tall? Tall stature, Hilar Danlos. Familial tall stature. Homocysteinuria, Kleinfelter yeah, syndrome, Toto yeah. syndrome. Yes. And so the closest differential is homocysteinuria, fragile X and so close. And the features of homocysteinuria and Marfan's are almost same, but main thing is that homocysteinuria are not hyper mobile. They have contractures. Mobile. Ah, they, they have yeah. multiple contractures and they don't have involvement of the cardiovascular system. And another important point is that children with Marfan syndrome, they have a good uh, intelligence, but homocysteinuria, they are some mental. Mentality is affected and there is also a risk of thromboembolism in homocysteinuria. So when you are talking about Marfan's, they might also ask you about homocysteinuria. You go through it about the diagnostic, as I told you, diagnostic, then lab or radiology, what are the things and what is the treatment. Okay. Is that okay? And lens is and, up in uh, this, the Marfan yeah. and lens is down in homocysteinuria. Lens of uh, subluxation. Oh, lens of yeah, yeah. Marfan is down. down uh, and uh, Marfan is upwards. Up when up, out. Everything up in down Marfan. and in. Everything uh, yeah, down in yeah. homocysteinuria. Down and in homocysteinuria is down and in. So this is regarding Marfan's may come because it is very easy to get a Marfan's child in the short stature. So you should not miss from the leg to the back to the arms to the head to the chest bus everything and do the hypermobile test. If it's more uh, first, hypermobility is very important to differentiate it from homocysteinuria. Okay. Dr. Raj, anything you want to add? Thanks. Uh, yeah. So, uh, thing is, uh, yeah, so the examination part was not in a structured way. Uh, it was a kind of like, you know, here and there. Uh, so, uh, so after initial introduction and uh, uh, taking permission to examine the child, uh, so you need to go ahead with the general observation. So in the general observation, we are supposed to look for the mentation, alertness, speech, uh, then you have to 4D, you have to look for uh, like dysmorphic features, dimensions, uh, devices attached and any uh, anything in the surroundings. Okay, so third can I, yeah, yeah. So can I have one quick question? Yeah, yeah. like the command in this exam is sorry, in this stem is given you have to examine on general physical examination. So you have taken the permission, everything has been done. You are on your all four five Ds, then you have to see the speech, mentality, hearing in this. And uh, now you went to general physical exam, had to talk like uh, how is the head, uh, the speller and this mouth and everything. So once actually you come to know that like this child is a tall, so you have to go directly with the tall stature, you have to do other things also. Yeah, I'll come to that, yeah. So in the general observation, other than dimensions, rest of other things, you look for the, those things. Then you need to go ahead with the measurements. So you need to take the height of Dimension. the child. Dimension. Just a minute. Height of the child, okay, upper segment, lower segment. How do you measure the lower segment? So you have to measure height, the sitting. 
sitting height yeah. and you have sitting to height. The total, total, yeah total height yeah. then you need to take the arm span okay then upper segment lower segment uh, so uh, that is very important and the ratio also you need to calculate because there is a decrease upper segment to lower segment ratio in case of uh, Marfan syndrome isn't it after this so major these length, all these all yeah. maneuvers we are supposed to do yeah these are the measurement first so after that we need to plot on the uh, growth chart and you need to look, yeah mm -hmm. look for the mid parental height and other things then what, you need to what's the importance the, of sitting height what's the importance of sitting height in this the, this is a, like upper look for the upper segment and lower segment basically okay after this you need to go for the tall session manuals so what are the tall session manuals guys arm span uh, no, that is, a, that is in measurement. So, like in hands, you have to okay. keep straight. You have to make the uh, child to stand and look for the, whether tips of the fingers whether touching in the mid thigh or beyond the mid thigh. Okay. So normally they will touch uh, like you know mid, mid thigh, and if it is lower down that, that means the arm span is more. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is the thing. First thing, and after that, what is the second maneuver you look for here? So wrist sign. Yeah. Okay, so thumb sign, size. thumb sign, yeah. Yeah. thumb sign, yeah. thumb sign, mm -hmm. and uh, then this hypermobility Biton score we can do, okay. and uh, uh, yeah, that I think okay. uh, so, arm is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay, so then you need to do the inspection, uh, like you know, inspection from anteriorly, laterally, and posteriorly. You have to look for the any deformity, abnormality, oh. symmetry, or symmetry, okay, star mark, contractures, okay. So, uh, anteriorly, laterally, posteriorly, uh, okay, posteriorly, you have to look for the scoliosis, asymmetry of the shoulder, anything is the scapula, you have to look for. Then, uh, okay, so inspection, you have to do. Uh, then you need to assess the gait, that is very, very important, and look for the scoliosis. After these things, then you have to go ahead with the, you have to make the child sit on the couch and start with the hand, checking for the pulse is very important, uh, pulse, any, uh, then any abnormality, uh, look for the scar mark, then go up, uh, uh, like, you know, look for the scadges scan, arm, forearm, uh, looking for the skin scar mark, rash, swelling, anything. Then you go ahead with the, uh, you know, face, head, look for the eye issues, hearing issues, oral cavity, uh, arching, dental hygiene, isn't it? Then you go to the neck, any swelling, pulsation, anything. So pulse, uh, you need to look for the water hammer pulse in case of tall session. That's very, very important because of the, they can have aortic regurgitation. So water hammer but, pulse. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, pulse. Yeah. Water hammer pulse. Okay. Uh, that's very, very important. And you have to take the blood pressure for fusion and everything. Then um, uh, go to uh, chest. You have to look for any scar mark. Yeah, see to rightly. You look for any abnormal chest deformity and look for any scar mark, any pulsation, active precardium, all the peripheral signs of aortic regurgitation. There are 20 signs of aortic regurgitation. You need to look for those signs also. Okay. So from head to toe. And abdomen, you have to look for the things and uh, go downwards, uh, check the, uh, you know, uh, hands, foot. Uh, Okay, so sinusis, clubbing, pallor, anything you need to look for, then you need to complete. Okay, then you have to say thank you. Uh, you need to cover the child, like, you know, make him, help him to dress and say thank you. And uh, after that, you need to summarize. Okay, so in the general physical examination, you are not supposed to do the systemic examination, like cardiovascular, whatever, respiratory. You're not supposed to do it. Okay. So how do you approach? Uh, so this child actually, Marfan syndrome, they are having the normal mentality. Okay, the closest differential diagnosis you can, yeah. So you can give maybe a uh, familial uh, tall structure you could give. You can give homocysteine urea, euler syndrome. euler syndrome, they have normal mentality. Okay, homocysteine urea, they have some mental uh, uh, you know, picture there. Yes. Yeah including triple X syndrome and uh, fragile X syndrome. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, actually disproportionate tall structure with the, uh, you know, dysmorphic features. What? So without dysmorphic features, you have simple obesity, family, uh, sorry, tall structure, then thyrotoxicosis. Um, okay. Uh, doctor, yeah. we, we missed uh, the, uh, to ask uh, to pinch the skin, to check for skin elasticity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. That is why I left office. Yes, yes. Okay. Then you have to go into the management is but it's a team approach and see as discussed already. Okay. And uh, complications, everything we have discussed. So let us go ahead with the communication station. Is that okay, guys?